Hey, it's Scott, and today we're going to run through the Sidious Link app from Aperture together with the ALMC real quick. Let's just dive right into it, opening up the app. This is the first screen you're going to see. You might have to log in as well. And if you do, just go ahead and create account and log in with your email and password. I've deleted my ALMC from here just to show you how to get it set up from scratch. You'll see this demo scene on top, but I'm actually going to ignore that. I'm actually going to delete it just to get it out of the way. And you'll have this blank square with a little plus in the middle there. I'm not going to bother with these casually shared and collaborated options on the bottom. We're just going to go ahead with the top option, click it, and it will add scene one. You can rename this if you want to uh, give you an idea of what that scene is all about. You can create multiple scenes for different groups of lights. Uh, so we'll name this ALMC because that's what I have in there. And then you're going to click on it to enter into that group, I guess you could call it. They call it a scene. It's basically a group. Of course, I haven't set up this group yet, so there are no lights in it. We're going to go ahead and click the green plus button on the top corner to add our lights. But if nothing shows up, even if you have the light turned on, they do give you this one, two, three step by step uh, process to go ahead and make sure that you can kind of reset the Bluetooth on your light to make sure it shows up here. So we're going to do that on the ALMC right now. And now you can see that MC is listed in this new fixtures list. We're going to check it off and click set up. And as it goes through that setup, click OK. And now we have that in our group. You can see some basic information right from here. You can see the uh, MC right on top. Uh, and you can see that it's being powered by AC power right now. You can also have some groups underneath, uh, which doesn't really make sense because I only have one light on here right now. You can also adjust the intensity right from this kind of home screen and you can turn it on and off with the touch of a switch which is also really nice instead of having to dial it all all the way off if you have it set on 66 percent for example and you want to turn the light off for a little while but you don't want to have to remember 66 uh, percent when you turn it back on click off back on again and you're at the percent that you wanted it to be at so that's really nice for uh, quick on and offs when you want to maintain the same settings if you click the little icon that looks like maybe a computer screen or a display of some sort on the bottom, you can see this different display. That again shows you your light here. You can click the power button to turn it on and off. And if you have multiple lights here, you can do that for all the fixtures at the same time, right from that bottom option. Going back to fixtures, we'll show you this list option here. We're gonna dial that back just a little bit here down to 10% for now. And we're gonna jump into the light itself. Before that though, just to quickly show you, you can also of course rename this. Uh, you can update the firmware and everything right from these three dots on the side of the light listed here. Now when you get into the light itself, especially for the ALMC, which has RGB and special effects and all that, there's a lot going on here. And you can see up top, they have some kind of general categories, white, gel, color, and effects. But under that, there are some kind of subcategories. So these are going to fall under those four big categories. And as you go through them, it will just automatically go through the gel and color and effects main tabs, I guess you could say, as you scroll through them. So you can use either way. You can go over to gel and it will jump right over to this display. You can go over to color and it will go over to your color picker wheel. Uh, and you can go over to effect and it will jump right into this main page. But there are other options for each of those. So we're going to start from the sub menu in CCT mode first. For the CCT display, you have your on off switch again at the top, as well as your intensity slider, pretty straightforward. You can also quickly set it to quarter power, half power or full power for quick adjustments. We're going to go back down to a quarter for now. You can also use the slider for your CCT, your actual color temperature. And this is more precise than it is in the actual light itself. So you can go basically in 10 degree increments here. Now this is a little bit tricky because it's with your finger, but you can adjust that exactly how you want it right from here or use the presets for 3200, 4000 or 5600K for quick adjustments. You can also click the little arrows icon on the bottom to dial this in here with this kind of uh, other display, which is I think a little bit less intuitive. So we're not going to talk about it all that much, but you can slide up and down for intensity and left and right for color temperature. Um, so it's, it's like a graph basically, but you can't see anything in the graph. It's just like a touchpad, I guess you can say. It's kind of cool and you can make some really quick, cool adjustments with it um, in a more creative way, I guess. I don't know, you can use it how you see fit. But again, you do also have the on off switch right at the top there. Next up, we have source type. Now here you can see at the bottom, there are some options for day white, uh, tungsten. You can switch it over to tungsten, studio lamps, uh, studio CP light, HMI 5600, uh, 5, HMI 6000, Daylight, uh, Natural White Metal Halide, uh, Xenon Short Arc Lamp, 
Hor Horizon Daylight and back to Day White. So you got some different sources that you could kind of mimic right here. And it's pretty intuitive even if you kind of, you know, don't know what you're looking for. You want Horizon Daylight. There you go. Boom. You got it. You can match the light from the horizon basically. Or you can get that kind of look if you're trying to recreate it with artificial lighting. That's pretty cool. And uh, you can see up at the top as you switch through those, it will also be reflected in the color temperature. So you can see, for example, an HMI 5600 is 5600, of course. If you go over to daylight, they have it set to 6500. Natural white metal halide is 4300. So you can adjust the intensity, of course, from here as well. And once again, switch it on and off. Next up, we're going to go over to our CTOCTB tab here, and you can start either from tungsten or from daylight as your original source, and then you can throw a CTO or a CTB gel on top of there. So you can start from tungsten and put a three-quarter CTB, for example, and you'll get the same effect as if you were actually doing that with a gel. You could also start from daylight, and let's go to full CTO or without CTO, which is just your daylight light, but you can match other lights or you can have a really good idea if this is how you're used to working. You can kind of replicate the light that you're used to creating here. Next up, we have the HSI, which you can see jumps over into the color tab on the top, and that's gonna give you a color wheel here, and you can just drag this around, and the further away from the center you get, the more saturated it will be, and you can see that reflected in the saturation uh, display, which is actually shown on screen, which is really nice. And as you go around, of course, the hue is going to be shifted. You can adjust the intensity right at the top, turn it off and on as you would expect. And you can see a little preview of that color in the box next to your hue and saturation readouts. Down the bottom, there's also a little icon for sliders, and you can switch over to that view if you want and adjust the intensity, the hue, and the saturation in a slider display, which again can sometimes be a little bit more intuitive or easier to get uh, very accurate adjustments. And I appreciate that they have both ways to dial in HSI settings here because this is going to be quick and visual, whereas these sliders are going to give you much more accurate, repeatable settings when you're dialing this in. Next up, we have a really cool option here, and this is the picker. So this is also going to work for your color mode, and you can see here that it's just going to go into your camera and it's going to let's say target this orange color and once you click pick up it will replicate that color on the light which is really really great and it works really really well but not only does it replicate that color you can still go in and tweak it so you can see on the screen the display for the hue and the saturation that that replicates so you can go ahead and tweak it however you want right now i have a hue of eight degrees and a saturation of 73 percent so if i want that a little bit less saturated i can dial it back or I can dial it up to be more saturated. You can also shift the hue a little bit if you feel like it's a little bit off. So you can get a very accurate reading of the color to begin with, but you can also tweak it just a little bit if you feel that it's a little bit off, which can happen, of course, because the lighting that you have on that object that you're using to color pick from. This is really, really cool though, and this is gonna be really great for recreating colors of products when you're doing product shots to shine the light on the background, for example, or uh, just a lot of really creative applications when you want to copy some other light source. This is gonna make it really quick and really easy because you can get a really great starting point that's really gonna be good enough in most cases, and then tweak it if you need to very, very easily and very quickly. And keep in mind, even in this mode, you do have your on and off switch, so you can turn that on and off while maintaining the settings that you have dialed in. Next up, we have the system sub tab, and this is going to be for your effects. And what's really great is you have absolute control over every effect here. Really, really, really great. Um, just to start off with, you can adjust the intensity, of course, of these effects, and that's something that other lights don't even have. So you can see all of the effects listed down here, and right now it's on fireworks. I'm gonna go ahead and click start, and it's going to start that effect for me. So I can adjust the intensity if I want this to be brighter uh, for fireworks. And right now, frequency is another setting you can adjust as well. So you can see perhaps on camera that this is not all that frequent with the frequency setting of one. But if we dial this up to, let's say, 10, then you can see the fireworks are going to be happening much more frequently. You can also go one more into R, which is random. And that's going to be great for things like this, because usually fireworks are not on a steady frequency, it's going to be something random. So this will allow you to kind of get a little bit more variety in the way that it, it, it shoots out your fireworks or whatever it is that you're working with. There are other modes that have this random setting as well, but you can adjust both the frequency for whatever scene you need to be in, as well as the intensity. And for fireworks, which is really great, now I have it in white light, you can also go over to color, and this is going to give you some color. You can see there that's blue and then orange. And you can also go into multi-mode. But before I talk too much, let's jump over to the next setting. We're gonna go over to fault bulb here. When you choose a new 
uh, a new special effect, you're going to want to click the start button. So now you can see it's still going with the fireworks, but if I click start, it's going to shift over to my faulty bulb setting. Again, intensity, of course, you can choose your color temperature also. So if you want more of a tungsten faulty bulb or a daylight faulty bulb, and you can adjust the frequency as well from 1 to 10, as well as random once again. And you can also go in here using HSI, so you can select the color right from here. So you can dial this in not only with daylight color, but if you want a faulty red bulb, you can do that. You can also dial this in once again with these sliders if that's easier and more accurate for you. And then you can confirm that and boom, you've got a faulty colored light. So really there's no limitation to how you dial this in. Jumping over to lightning now, let's click play to get that going. You can see I have the intensity set at 56 and right now it's at a tungsten color. Uh, you can also dial in the frequency here in the same way, 1 to 10 or random. Um, and you can see the effect as it's happening right there. You can slide this up to more of a daylight temperature, whatever works for your scene. You can make it brighter, you can make it darker. You can also use this trigger button to actually physically trigger the, the flashes. So if you have some kind of soundtrack that you need to match, boom, 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 boom. You can match that. Uh, really really accurately so that's really cool to be able to trigger the effect not only have it on random not only have the adjustable frequency you can actually trigger it to match whatever sound effects or whatever uh, your actors are doing or whatever you need for that particular situation boom 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 and that's just really really cool to be able to do that I wish you could do it for fireworks as well maybe that will come in the future but I think that would be another uh, good effect to have this trigger option built into. Next up is TV, and again, it's kind of a lot of the same. You know, you got your intensity, you got your frequency, including random. You can do warmer, uh, which this will shift the color a little bit because of that TV effect. I'm sorry, let me play it. It will shift the color. You can see it goes between uh, 2800K to 4700K. You can go more for a natural, and it shows you that temperature range underneath there. You can also go for cooler. So it will shift the color a little bit to get that effect, the, the TV effect. Um, but it can show you exactly what you're going to be expecting here uh, right under whatever option you choose for warmer, natural, or cooler, which is really, really cool. Jumping over into pulsing, let's click play so you can see this. This is another fun one that you could use for some really cool special effects. So of course, you got the intensity, you've got the frequency, including random. Uh, and then you can adjust the color temperature here. Once again, you can also jump into HSI. You can select the color using the color wheel or using the sliders so you can get whatever color it is you want. Let's go for a very saturated uh, red because this could be like a warning light, for example, in a, in a spaceship. I don't know, something like that. Let's go to a little bit of a faster panicky feeling pulse. And you can imagine, I think, how that could be a really, really fun effect to have. Uh, and it's very easy to dial in very, very precisely right here in the app. Jumping over to fire, now you have something similar to the TV, of course, let's click play. And this is going to be, again, kind of varying the, the color a little bit to get that effect. So you can once again go from warmer to natural to cooler. You can adjust the frequency once again and the intensity. Jumping over to cop car here, you got again your intensity and the flash. This, this is a little bit different, it's not exactly the frequency. Let's click play, you got flash 1. You've got flash 2, which is a little bit of a different flashing pattern. Flash 3, again, different flashing pattern flash four and you got cycle one so these are just some different patterns of how it cycles cycle two cycle three cycle four cycle five and then r for random you can also go in let's go to cycle two and you can also go in to choose the color right now r for red you can see it's only red you can also slide that over to b so it's only b only blue you can slide that over to r and b which is red and blue you can slide that over to b and w which is blue and white and you can slide that over to RBW, which is red and blue and white. So different countries will have different colored police lights and also, you know, ambulance versus police car or a fire engine. So you can really kind of customize that. And that's, again, something that other lights are lacking in this special effects area. Next up, we have your party light. And again, this is going to be pretty similar to the other ones. We'll hit play. This is going to adjust the intensity, the saturation of your color and the frequency, how fast it's going to cycle through these. And again, you can jump over to random as you can with the other settings. Finally, we have your paparazzi setting. We'll click play so you can see that. You can choose the frequency, uh, you can choose the intensity, and you can choose the color temperature once again here from 6500 down to 3200. So you can really, really customize pretty much every one of these special effects. It's really, really cool. We'll click pause here. And you can also go over to presets. 
and you can save something to presets. So if I want to save that last one to presets, you can see SFX presets PP1. That's my setting that I was just using for that special effect. You can go in and rename it if you want to rename it as something that is maybe more uh, easy to remember. And you can also see all of the settings. So the intensity, the color temperature, the frequency. So if you don't remember exactly what that was, you can just look at that real quick and you can see, oh, okay, this was a pretty fast 3200K, 79% uh, paparazzi. Uh, effect. So it's really, really cool. You can delete that, of course, if you accidentally saved it or if you don't need it anymore. Uh, you got your album. This is going to be uh, all of your presets, for example. So let's see, save to presets. Boom. Let's add that to, let's collect it. It says collect it to album. If you look at your album, then you got your album here. So you can rename your collection. You can make some collections of special effects that you save. You can do a whole lot with this. You can click X and go back to this. You know, there's just a real lot that you can do with this. And I'm sure I didn't touch on absolutely everything that you can do with this app, but hopefully you can see just how deep it is. And you can kind of get an idea for what to expect when you're going to get into this. And I don't have multiple lights right now that can work with this. So I'm only using the ALMC, but if you had two or three lights that could work with this, and this will become more and more compatible with more and more aperture lights, present, future, and past, uh, you can really do a whole lot with this in terms of groups, in terms of um, just, you know, a whole lot. Anyway, that's the bottom line here, so you can do a whole lot with it. So hopefully you liked it. If you have any questions, though, of things that I may not have covered, let me know down below, and I'll try to figure that out and get back to you as soon as I can. If you liked this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more in the future, and as always, thank you for watching.